last week, the first three episodes of Reacher Season 2 dropped on Amazon Prime. I was a big fan of the first season, so I was very excited to check out the new season and wanted to share my thoughts on it. Before I start talking, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. How are you feeling about the first few episodes of Reacher Season 2, as well as what's your point of reference? Did you like the first season of Reacher? Are you new to it? Have you read the books? All of that fun stuff. And on that note, you can listen to one of the Jack Reacher books for free if you sign up for a free trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. I am a big fan of Audible. I have been since August of 2015 when one of my friends got married in Houston, and so I needed to go on a very long car ride to Houston and drive back, and I wanted something to listen to, and I've been using Audible ever since, and you can get a free audiobook of your choice, including any one of the Reacher novels, if you sign up for that free trial at the link down below in the description. With that said, let's start talking about Reacher Season 2 real quick. So I, as of right now, have only seen the first three episodes. Today, as I'm filming this, the fourth episode is available on Amazon. Amazon Prime. Uh, I just haven't had time to watch it yet, and tomorrow's my anniversary, and the day after that is Christmas Eve, and the day after that is Christmas, so the likelihood that I would have a moment to share some quick thoughts on season two and get something watched, it, this is the moment I have if I want to be able to talk about Reacher season two before late next week. So, as for me, as someone that really liked season one of Reacher, I, I loved the first three episodes of season two. Like it, it is just when there's just a TV show that I just want to put on with my wife and watch it. That's not designed as homework for the channel. That doesn't have the expectations of putting a theory videos, reactions, anything like that. That's something I would just watch as a throw on TV show in my household after the kids go to bed. Reacher is the show that that captures that really nicely. And in a lot of ways, some of that is because it is, you know, throwback to a, a different era of entertainment, of 90s action thrillers. And you're, you're pulling from these novels that do go back quite a while. But the, that whole genre was huge back in the 90s. And it's not quite what it was before. I mean, you still have the Equalizer and a few things like that. But it's not as prominent. And some of it is moving to streaming and Amazon Prime seems to be one of the channels that are streaming services that's really grabbing hold of it. And I think they're doing a really good job with it of knowing what 42 year old dads <laughs> like to watch after their kids go to bed. They are delivering those things for me and kind of go into the specifics of kind of what uniquely about this season has worked really well for me. So right off the bat, of course, Alan Richardson is just He's perfect as Reacher. And I'm not like a Reacher expert, but I have read some of the books back when I delivered paint, used Audible as I talked about before, and listened to a couple of the, the Reacher books because it was right around when the second Tom Cruise movie came out. I was like, I should check some of these out. And like Jack Reacher is supposed to, like as a character, he's very much about his physical presence that you just see Reacher in a scene and you immediately go, that guy's a tank, that guy's huge, that guy's a threat. And he's absolutely able to, I mean, of course he pulls that off physically, but he just gives off that energy in each sequence. When he walks into the room, you believe it. It's a, just such a classic example of where, of course Tom Cruise is a better star than Alan. Of course, Tom Cruise is a better actor than Alan. But in no universe, in no way, shape or form is Tom Cruise better at this role. And that's what so much of acting is about. So much of casting is about. It's it's finding the right person that can absolutely pull off a perfect version of a character. And like there's you know, stuff in this show where he walks up and kicks a car and causes the airbag to pop out. And you believe that with a guy that looks like Alan. But beyond that, like, he can be likable without being, like, overly charming in his demeanor. It, just the way he carries himself, the way he relates to people and respects them, creates scenarios. You, like, you buy into the fact that he cares about these people without needing it to be with overt gestures. Another thing that, um, both in the writing as well as his performance, what you're able to do, they've, they, I think... 
maybe did better this season than last year thus far is making it clear that he's an investigator. Like it's not just that he's a tank, but he's like really sharp and he observes things. So all throughout the first three episodes, both him and his team who are the investigators actually come off like people that notice things that we don't notice. And how much of it is just screenwriting fooey? How much of it is a bunch of malarkey that just sounds good in dialogue form or sounds smart? I don't know, but it works. And that they'll walk into it and they'll just have like this analysis of what they're seeing and the like, why would they break this window? There's no reason to break this window for if they were looking for something, this came out of anger and what was it? And they just do things that in the moment feel smart and believable. And while being the tank, you believe that this guy could make these observations. Kind of continuing on this point, one of the nice details about this season is the fact that it is uh, more of, well, it's about his team. So it, it finds a way to like dig into his past, give him characters that he cares about, where his first season is about his brother that we didn't, we never met. And then this one, it's about his team that we are getting to know. And it kicks off in a fashion where well, I don't care about these dead people. And then you care about like, like you feel bad later about some of these deaths that we see early on as we get to know them. You, you feel the loss. You mourn that. And you believe that coming from Alan that he like is deeply hurt by his friends dying. And at the same time, never drops the, the stoic dis de demeanor. Like it's, it's always still there. But meeting his team, seeing what he used to do, and then seeing him working with them now, it just adds a new layer to it. It adds something fresh and different to where you get all of the, the tough guy stuff that we got before. You have the investigation, but the dynamic and the people that he's working with feels different because there's a history there. So, and plenty of surprises, plenty of just like, just sincere tough guy and movie stuff that is out of fashion in a lot of ways in movies, but they can pull it off and they do it so earnestly because they know that's what we want. We're like, yeah, we're going to go to cowboy stuff. Like you love that. And he's going to go rogue. And there's the guy, the cop that's a jerk, but he like, he's a jerk in the right direction. And so you like him while he's being very unlikable, all of this stuff, it's hitting all the cliches. It's playing the formula, but it's doing it right. And so uh, I'm, I thoroughly enjoyed the first three episodes. I'm very excited to watch the rest of them. Actually, my kids are going to the grandparents tonight. So I'm sure we will be watching episode four tonight. Um, and I, I'm very much looking forward to it. So let me know where are you guys at on the first few episodes of Reacher this season. Let me know down below in the comment section. Remember, you can get an audiobook for free at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. And keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.